Uniform circular motion um, is pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, if you have an object, and let's say I'm taking this, uh, I don't have a good example, if I had a rope and I swing it over my head, it's going to travel in a circle, right? So that object feels an acceleration, and the reason for that is because it's changing direction. Acceleration, again, is the change in velocity, and velocity is both the magnitude, which is the speed, and the direction. So in a circle, you're changing your direction, so you feel an acceleration. That acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration. Um, centripetal means center-seeking, center-seeking acceleration. Uh, and the equation for that is uh, the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r where v is your tangential velocity and r is the radius of the circle that you're forming. So to kind of draw that out, sketch that out here, um, I have some object of mass m, not that that's really relevant here, um, and let's say I have it tied to a rope. All right. So the rope is going to be of length r because it's the radius of the circle that I'm making. Uh, and as I swing this around, it's going to have some velocity, right, some speed. And that's going to be tangential to the direction of the circle. So here it's going to be straight up like that. Over here, it's going to be down like that. Over here, it's going to be over there like that. Um, the acceleration of the object, uh, try to figure out what direction do you think the acceleration is going to be in. Um, take a little bit and look at this. The acceleration, uh, it turns out, if you had it, some uh, common guesses uh, include that it's going to point readily outward. Which if it re it's readily outward, if you're moving this way, but you're accelerating that way, then you're going to curve to the right. So that's not the kind of circle we want. Uh, if it's uh, along the direction of the velocity is another common guess. That means if you're accelerating the same direction you're moving, this is just going to go straight up really fast and speed up. Um, the correct answer is that acceleration actually points uh, radially inward, uh, and should actually, I drew this a little bit off, this should be perpendicular to the direction of the tangential velocity. So radially inward is the direction of your acceleration. Because this way, you have your velocity moving this way, the acceleration pulls it in towards the circle, so it's going to curve that way. The moment it curves that way, now velocity is this way, and acceleration is that way. So it's going to continue to curve. And this type of, uh, this curvature, like, Hard to actually draw this. Um, kind of like this is going to happen the whole way around the circle. Right? It's going to continue to try to accelerate in the direction of the radial inward. Um, and as it does so, it's going to turn because acceleration continuously changes. So that's, uh, that's the direction component of this, of this thing. Another valuable equation to know is the period of an object moving in a circle. Period is the amount of time it takes for it to complete one full rotation. So uh, we're going to call that t, right, for time, because the length of time. And time is equal to distance over speed, right? So the distance it's going to travel if it goes in a circle is 2 pi r, and the speed is going to be v. So that's our period. These two things together are going to allow you to solve uh, a lot of circular motion problems. Um, and in the coming videos, we're going to combine this with some other forces and see what happens. Um, but for now, let's look, at a, let's look at a simple problem. Let's say I have a rope, um, and let's say my rope is, uh, has a length of 2 meters. Um, suppose I swing it in a circle over my head, and let's say that uh, it takes 4 seconds to complete one rotation. And... Uh, let's also say the object has a mass, uh, the object on the end of my rope has a mass of 10 kilograms. So I have a 10 kilogram object attached to a 2 meter rope, and I'm swinging it around my head, and it takes 4 seconds to complete one rotation. So that's, that's really slow. Um, and I want to know, part, uh, that's two parts, A, uh, what is the velocity of the object, and B, how much force is necessary to keep it moving. So if I, how much force do I have to apply to the rope in order to keep it moving the way it's moving in a circle like this? So for part A, I'm going to come over here. Part A, we want to know the velocity. 
Well, actually, the only thing we have of velocity, we have this velocity here and this velocity here. Uh, we don't know what the magnitude of acceleration is, so we can't use this. Here, we know it takes four seconds to complete a rotation, and the length, uh, which is going to be the radius of the circle, right? If I have a rope a certain length and I spin it around, it's going to form a circle around the center. So I know the radius. So we can actually use the period equation to solve it. So t is equal to 2 pi r over v. This is part a. Uh, we can rearrange this and say that v is equal to 2 pi r divided by t, and then we can substitute in the values that we know. So v is going to be equal to 2 pi times 2 meters divided by 4 seconds. So this gives you 4 meters times pi divided by 4 seconds, uh, which 4 over 4 is 1, so you get that v is equal to about 3.14 meters per second. And that's the velocity of the object. Uh, part b asks about how much force is necessary. That's a harder question because we don't have any forces in here. However, we know that Newton's second law says that force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? And we do have an acceleration. We can find what this acceleration is because we now have the velocity and we have the radius. So if we want a force, all we have to do is multiply by the mass. So the force necessary is going to be m times the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r. So plugging in our numbers, we get 10 kilograms times our velocity squared, 3.14 meters per second squared divided by the radius, which is 2 meters. So we can calculate this out on our calculators, or you know, 10 over 2 is about 5, so 5 times uh, 3 squared is about 9. So you're going to get a little bit greater than 45. You get probably uh, 49.3 newtons, right around there. Uh, and newtons is the unit of force. Uh, and that works, because that's what we should have. And you can check this, kilograms, meters squared, over meters, that goes to meters, so kilogram meter over second squared, uh, which is what a newton is, so we're good. So these are the two equations that you should familiarize yourselves with uh, when studying uniform circular motion. It's called uniform, by the way, because same speed all the way uh, through. Um, and if you get this, then you should be able to move on to the next part, uh, which involves combining this with different possible forces that can provide the centripetal acceleration.